be true of this age where people have a big disconnect between thought and action. Okay. It seems like they need something in addition to make the conversion from thought into action. All right. Whereas what's really so is that due to the climate of these times, there has been a cultivated breakdown between thought and action. It comes from entertainment media. People okay. watch the news in a situation in which there's nothing actionable during the watching, no matter how horrendous the story. People okay. are in a passive mode. And they, people then get conditioned into being an, a, a spectator rather than a participant. Okay. Participation involves intention. People are typically weak in intention. Hence the lore about New Year's resolutions never coming true. Mm -hmm. Right? The people's intention is offline for the most part. That goes along with entertainment because the intention is offline during entertainment. You're not expected to respond to what you see okay. on TV. And so there's a necessary resurrection of that natural connection. You may notice that dogs don't seem to have that problem. They see something, yeah. immediately there is a natural response. But humans sure. have been conditioned by the entertainment media to be disempowered, in effect. And so okay. they think they need more knowledge in order to make a change. And that's not what's needed. The knowledge is sufficient. It's the intention. All right. So when a person does something like, uh, well, a crystal crown procedure or a coronation procedure, what that's doing is reforging the connection between intention on the other three. But the person still has to make the intentional move to convert conception ideas into actualities. And people call that creativity. And in more extreme forms they call it genius. Okay. See, a genius isn't someone, some pipe smoking philosopher sitting around thinking deep thoughts like the Wizard of Oz or something. Yeah. They are active. And the problem I see among people largely is that people are not active participants, but I think that they are having the flow of creative ideas and imaginings, but that they don't capture those and make them tangible. So they evaporate. So the Tetra C procedures can lay the groundwork for that integration, the integration between imagining or conceiving and action. Right. Now there's another aspect to that. Which is Fiction, F-I-C-T-I-O-N. See, I made reference to the news. Yes. But in fact, here's what's happened with fiction. Is uh, Fiction has undermined people's intelligence. Fiction involves the willing suspension of disbelief. Which means their discriminative faculty is disarmed. Okay. An interesting exercise is to notice a certain person who's in, a, you know, let's say TV series, a fiction, they play a character. Mm -hmm. And to, just to notice how you experience that character and then to see them in a personal interview. And you'll notice that there's something present in the personal interview that isn't present in the fictional character. All right. There is a depth, a realism 
to the actual actor when you see them out of character. Mm -hmm. But people don't have that discriminative faculty commonly. So two things happen. When they see a person in uh, an actor in a fictional situation, they may attribute reality to it, but it's a false reality. So on one hand, they're not moved to act, to participate. But on the other hand, they're satisfied to believe that what they're seeing is actual. Okay. So, you know, a good actor can get you angry or move you to tears or get you to feel all manner of things. But even that is superficial compared to the actual person when seen in a live situation. There is a depth to the person's actual qualities that isn't present regardless of how good an actor they are. Sure. The best actors are very believable, but they're not comparable to the actor themselves in a live situation. So people have become adulpated <laughs> because they're conditioned by the proliferation of fiction and of news stories, both of which put a person in a spectator situation without participation. All right. See? And this leads to an easily manipulable populace. People have lost their intelligence voluntarily in order to distract themselves from their actual lives. Right. See? Which actually are calling for participation, their actual lives. Mm-hmm. But they're given the green light on being non-participatory by the entertainment media. And that becomes the familiar and comfortable state for people. As a result, they're not very creative and they consider creative people to be extraordinary or beyond their own abilities, which is not true. They just have the creative types are disciplined. Mm -hmm. And that makes things seem difficult and also makes people look for something more when they're learning something new than the instruction and the intent to follow the instruction. They think there's something else needed. I've seen this elsewhere with people. Sure. And it's just a sign that they have become television or entertainment mentalities. They're, they haven't become actual movers. Right. As, as a result, they think it's difficult to change. It really isn't difficult to change. What's, what's difficult, if anything, is to shift from being a spectator to being a participant. You even look at sports, come to think of it. I don't know if you watch football. No. Okay. Any sport? Um... The only sport that I've had any interest in is bicycle racing. Okay. Well, even that applies. Okay. You know, you, you see a, a, a flock of, of bicyclists going around a corner, mm -hmm. and they're all leaning in the direction of the turn. Right. And you get a subliminal sensation of what it would be like to be riding. Yes. Fairly faint, unless you yourself ride. And so, as elite athletes, they're considered a class beyond ourselves. And we are thereby excused from excelling. Okay. Or free from even living our potential when it shows up. So there is this indoctrination of the times. It's also aided and abetted by religion particularly where prayer is invoked for the sake of personal benefit. Mm -hmm. And then if it doesn't happen, they come up with the excuse, God works in mysterious ways. So it's always endlessly put off, while the belief in it is somehow supposed to be maintained. They call that faith, which, by the way, isn't faith. Mm -hmm. 
It's a misuse of the term. What it is is, if anything, hope. Faith is simply being at peace in one's situation. That's it. Okay. There's nothing more to faith than being at peace in one's situation. But if a person is hoping for a change of situation, that's hope. But of course, conditioned as people are, it's happening in a moment when the person is conditioned to be a passive spectator. Right. So in answer to that, there's the saying, God helps those who help themselves which isn't really taken seriously. It's like New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. thing. But it's really an exhortation to personal responsibility rather than a passive event like winning the lottery. <laughs> okay. Right? I, I really haven't given this talk to anyone else than you at this moment. Okay. But it's something that applies to a lot of people. Maybe almost everybody. I can see that, yeah. Yeah. It's good to expect results, but we have to participate in the results. Exactly, Act yeah. yeah. Anything from your end about this? Um, I think you you jogged me a little bit to uh, participate better. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I remember in the 70s when the EST training was in vogue. Mm -hmm. And the trainer made repeated and forceful reference to participation. Okay. And the reason he needed to do that is that people don't tend to participate. They tend to watch the way they watch TV and every other spectator's sport. Okay. So it's a fairly substantial shift. Well, if people got active that way, we wouldn't have the fool world we're in right now where only the most self-serving are motivated to get active. Mm -hmm. See? And then they abuse and exploit those around them who are spectators. You know, the lambs to the slaughter because they are passive. Yeah. And they get eaten. Yes. And then people go about protesting and complaining and stamping their feet and shaking their fist, which is about all they do when they watch a sport on TV. Yeah, yeah. Right? So don't get in gear. So that's my two cents. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take it under advisement. All right. I really haven't given this talk to anyone else than you at this moment. Okay. 